Hey guys, in this video today we're going to look at how we can use open tracing for our applications built in typical cloud integration business works. Um, and so in order to start off, you just need a sample project. It doesn't matter what it is. Um, essentially, you can be one of the samples that come in actually out of the box. So in this case, I use the bookstore app. Um, this is a very common example that we use, but essentially um, you could add books, you can remove books, you can get books, different things. Um, so there's a little bit more than a normal, just like somehow REST app. So we're not going to actually go through and actually building the app and such. I assume you guys already know how to do that. If you don't, um, check out one of the, uh, the other videos that we have that talks a little bit about building applications and deploying it onto Docker. So we're going to be doing this on Docker. Um, so once you've actually um, exported this, uh, created the Docker image for this project and such, um, you're going to, in order to actually get open tracing up, what you're going to want to do is actually uh, start the all-in-one Docker image that uh, Jager Tracing has. So you know, if you just go to jagertracing.io, getting started, you can just copy and paste this into your terminal and this will pull the image and start it up in your um, Docker. Um, or, instance. So uh, once you have that started, uh, if I go here, I'm actually running this on an AWS instance, especially so Docker PS. Um, you'll see that it's starting up, or it already started. Um, I've had it running for a while, but um, you shouldn't have any issues starting it up. If you go, if you want to look at the web UI, which is what you probably want to see, uh, it's going to be 16.686 um, on that IP address. So let me uh, Pull that up. So that copied the port. And um, you'll see here that you have your uh, Jerry UI where you can actually trace and such. This is uh, old um, that I set up before. Um, so we're actually going to do it from scratch to show you exactly how. Everything pops up there. But this is the UI you should see once you have the Docker container running um, for the open tracing. And if you don't see this, then something is wrong. Maybe you have some sort of port issues and such, but um, you should be able to access this on, on this port and be able to see this. Um, so once you have that running, now we have to actually deploy our application into our, uh, basically, into Docker. So I actually have my Docker image already built. Uh, bookstore. So you'll need to, like I said earlier, uh, if you don't know how to do this, check out one of our other videos that talk a little bit about this. But essentially, you build your app, you um, and then you create a Docker image for it. So once you have that Docker image, you'll be able to run it. And so there's a few, basically, to run it. It's just a matter of doing a Docker run. I'm going to run it uh, with Z because I don't want to see the log streamed. I'm going to link it to uh, Jager. So. Um, you don't have to link it if you're actually accessing an externally facing um, instance of this, just because if it's external facing, then you can just hit the IP address. But um, for the sake of saying, okay, maybe you're going to do it all locally, um, then you're going to want to put that link in there. The port, so whatever port you'll be using for your application, in this case, it's 8080, and then you're going to have to set some uh, environment variables. So VW Java Ops. And basically, the, uh, this environment variable that I'm setting right now is how you tell your BW um, project that you are, or that you want to enable open tracing. So, BW Java Ops, uh, BW Engine Open Tracing Enable, true. And then we're going to set another variable, and this will be for the uh, agent host. So essentially, what is the IP or the host name of the actual uh, Jager agent? In this case, because we're going to be linking it, we could just use the linked name. Uh, we don't have to put an actual IP address, so I'm just going to use that. And we're going to have to also put the port of that agent. So that'd be 6831. And if you want to know where I'm actually getting this port and such, uh, you're going to want to check the docs. Um, and if you look here, tells you. So we're going to be using UDP to actually talk our, yeah, talk to our uh, project. So in this case, you're going to want to use uh, right here, UDP 6831. Um, so this is for Compact Thrift. You can use this. Uh, this serves the front end, so obviously that's how we hit and got that UI. And then um, there'll be one more that we need to set as well. So I'm going to put that here. 
Jager, Sampler, Manager, Host, Port, Jager, 5778. So um, basically, this is your sampler, um, how, you, how it's managed, how it knows to do, what type of sampling to use. So once again, if you're not using link, you can put the IP address, but because we're using link, um, we're just going to put the um, link name. And then you say what the image is. So, it is. so you should have Docker run, link, Jager, port, different environment variables. So one BW Java ops, the other one Jager agent host, Jager Azure port, and sampler manager host port. So if you want a little bit more information about this, we actually have it in our documentation. So if you go to docs2go.com and you search uh, business merge container edition, so because we're deploying it into Docker, you'll, you'll want to use this. Um, it basically tells you the different ports you need to connect, or the different, not the different ports, but the different variables you need to set in order to connect. So in this case, because I'm using a UDP connection, I need to set these three variables. But if I wanted to use an HTTP connection, I could just set these two. It's just a matter of preference. So um, you might want to check that out. So now we can actually run this. And um, let's give it a, a few seconds to start up. Check the logs. Uh, so it's still starting up. Let me check the logs again. Uh, so now we have started. So if I actually want to uh, see what this app is doing, let me go copy this IP address. And on port 8080. I need to add a swagger, backslash swagger to the end of this so that I get the swagger interface. And you'll see that um, our bookstore application is running. So if you, if you decide to use the bookstore sample, you should see something like this. Um, if you've used it before, it's the same. And I'm just going to do a get request. Well, before I do that, I'm going to want to go to the chair UI, select the um, bookstore application service, and find traces. Right now, there's no trace because there hasn't been anything um, actually queried. So if I do uh, try it out, I should now, okay, I see my uh, different projects or I see the different books that are available within this application. So now if I, if I do find trace, you should now see the trace call within this actual application itself. And if you notice that there's two trace calls. So essentially you have your books, which is your books is what queries your books DB. So if we actually go back to our project, so what I did is that um, I'm calling this books get, that's essentially what it is, get all. So what it's saying, it's, and if we actually break this down, so this is the full trace, but the first one is on message start. So on message start would be properties, this. So it, this little activity took 0 0.05 milliseconds. So now the next activity, if you close this, is on message end. So this one took 0.21 milliseconds. In between that, you have your get all books activity. So this is this. Essentially, if we click on it, it takes us to the sub process, which is this get all books uh, database call, which is why it makes sense that this is the longest portion of the trace call, because this is now pulling all the information from whatever database we've set and um, it's just and then bringing it up to our Swagger interface. And then here, get out. So this is um, how it's actually showing us the information and how we're actually interfacing it. So we go back to the books. So this is the, the, the longest one. This is the get out. This is the last one. And now it's done. Um, your trace is complete. And if we go to the DB, actually, let me just show you here. But notice how, uh, in terms of length of time, this is 193. So DB. So this is just um, breaking it down a little bit more, but when you're actually looking at it, get books, the activity name, get all books out. So if we go back, get books, get books out. So we're actually breaking up, breaking it up a little bit more. So the first one was the generic or the full um, call. So this beginning. And you have this process as a process entity or its entirety, the rest call in the end, while the second one here is just the books DB portion of it, which is the start, the database call, 
the get all books here and then the end. So it's broken up a little bit. Um, we can see on the two traces there. And it's the exact same thing if we wanted to look at um, events within here. So if I just click on events, if I just do a get on the events, try it out. Um, in this case, there's no events, so it's like I can return anything. But um, you still should see within the trace, if you notice um, it here, look how much shorter amount of time it is because there's no events to pull from a database because there isn't any. So obviously, it's going to take a little. It's going to take less time. If we break it up, you'll notice how. It's just, okay, get all events takes 26 milliseconds because there is anything, there's not nothing. So this is a great way of troubleshooting, uh, basically, and seeing, okay, if your application's running slow or if your app isn't the, whatever, um, you know, isn't working the way that you think it should in terms of performance, if you want to get into the bottom of performance issues and such, this is a great way of seeing, okay, which um, activities or which processes within your actual application are causing a slowdown. So if I went here and I say, okay, this is not acceptable in terms of time length, I need to try to cut this down, maybe there's a way that I can build this out um, or improve the way that my infrastructure is that will reduce this amount of time. Um, it could be that the database I'm calling is very far away from where I'm currently sitting in terms of um, where my app is sitting. So maybe it's sitting, my database is sitting on the East Coast while my app is running on the West Coast. Could be a reason for this. So it's a good way to sort of think, okay, um, what are a few things that I, maybe I could improve um, with regard to actually uh, the speed of the app. So yeah, um, also over time, um, as we have more, more releases, this should get a little bit more detailed. Um, so this is for, uh, this works, the container edition release of 2.4. So as we go over in time, there should be a little bit more detail that comes out as well. But um, yeah, it's very helpful. And um, hopefully this video was helpful. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave it in the comments below. Thank you.